Tens of thousands of nurses and ambulance staff in England are beginning the biggest strike in the history of the NHS over pay and conditions. Nick Dixon is at the Royal Sussex Hospital, one of those that, of course, will be affected. It will cause huge disruption, won't it, uh, Nick? Staff, of course, feel they're backed into a corner. This is their only option for making their views heard. Yeah, exactly, Ranveer. For them, it's not just about the money, getting a pay rise, it's about getting respect for the job as well. And I think at this stage, a lot of NHS staff will be looking at this and perhaps wondering if the Prime Minister is starting to feel under pressure personally to get some kind of resolution here, seeing the fact that the Welsh Government have at least managed to get uh, strikes suspended there as the unions and union members mull over a revised offer. And there seems to be a degree of progress, at least in Scotland as well, yet here it is still stalemate. 73 NHS trusts involved in today's strike action. Again, we are being advised to take extreme care and caution using emergency services. <laughs> Combined strikes for maximum impact, making the biggest day of industrial action in 75 years of health service history. Today, ambulance staff in England and Wales and nurses in England will be on the picket line. Ambulance dispatcher Mark Robinson made the journey from Yorkshire to London last week to try and get his message to ministers. They're burnt out, they're at the end of the tether. And some of them, they've been here years and they just, they can't take it anymore and they're going and finding new jobs. The entire week ahead will be dominated by industrial action in the health service. Today, it's nurses as well as ambulance crews and call handlers from the GMB, Unison and Unite unions. Tomorrow, the Royal College of Nursing will continue to strike. And on Thursday, NHS physiotherapist staff will walk out and thousands of ambulance staff across five services in England will also be striking on Friday. We run the real risk of having an impact on the speed at which we can get through patients' operations, the improvements we want to see in urgent and emergency care. So we really need to see a speedy resolution to the industrial action and make sure that there is negotiation at a national level to resolve it. Once again, it's a concerning time for those who fear they may need to call on the NHS. Some feel lives will be at risk. It could happen to any of us at any time. You could fall under a bus or something and uh, be waiting in an ambulance rather than being treated. What concerns me is the dip in services and emergency services because of the government. With discontent growing, ministers will hope these strikes don't plant the seeds of yet more unrest in the future. Nick Dixon, Good Morning Britain. Uh, now, look, let's, let, and there's so much to talk about. Uh, can we, let's start with the strikes, of yeah. course. Uh, the biggest, expected to be the biggest strike in the 75-year history mm. of the NHS. Nurses and ambulance drivers on strike today. For the I mean, first time together, at first ever. Time. Yeah. Yep. We have seen that on Friday in Wales, Kevin, the, they, they came to an agreement or, the, you know, there's an increased pay offer to the nurses in mm. Wales. Another 3% yep. was offered and they've averted this. Does that give you a sense that actually in England this could happen as well? That Steve Barkley could actually finally sit down and negotiate in a sort of a, a proactive way with the nurses? If he was freed by the Chancellor Jeremy Hunt and the Prime Minister Rishi Sunak to do, because we, we know, and uh, St Steve Barclay has made no secret of the fact he's been looking for extra money mm. to give a pay, a pay rise mm. to halt the strikes, but he's been stopped by uh, number 10 and number 11 Downing Street. So you can see a way forward. If they find it in Wales, why can't you find it in England instead of the government just deciding to dig its heels in and allow the dispute I mean, to go on and on and on? Well, they're and not, actually not, get worse yeah, because yeah. this week is a massive yeah. week for health strikes. I'm still confident that in the budget, which is in March, that there's going to be extra cash of some form for the nurses. Now, that's still six weeks away, which means we yeah. could have six more weeks of strikes, which... Ain't helping anybody. Shall we um, throw a former Good Morning Britain presenter into the mix here? Because uh, Piers Morgan did that interview, of mm. course, with Rishi Sunak last week. <laughs> um, and he asked about the nurses' strike. Yeah. I just wonder whether Rishi Sunak's answer did point towards the fact that he's minded to do something yeah. in the budget. Let's have a look. You're right, nurses should be an exception. And that's because they do an incredible job for all of us, and they demonstrated that during the pandemic. And we did treat them as an exception. You know, people forget that actually during, during COVID, when I was chancellor, 
we instituted a public sector pay freeze. I would love to give the nurses a massive pay rise. Who wouldn't? It certainly would make my life easier, wouldn't it? Right now, there's a record amount of money going into the NHS, but we have to put that in lots of different places. We need to hire more doctors, more nurses. Mm. Mm. You see, I'm come, I, I mean, this is what I'm hearing, that, that in the budget, it's not yes. so long away now, there'll be, whether it's a, it could be a one-off payment uh, and, um, and a signal about the, the following year's pay, pay review, which can start in April, so... But that doesn't solve the problem now. Well, that's the issue, uh, Kevin. We've got these nurses going on strike, the ambulance workers going on strike. There are people missing their appointments today. There are mm. people whose health is being put in jeopardy today. If in six weeks' time, as Andrew suspects, there will be a little bit of money, why not bring that forward and, and start things moving now so the nurses don't have to strike? No, it's, it's appalling negotiations by the government. Uh, I mean, it, what, uh, you know, Sharon Gray at Unite just said there's an abdication of responsibility here. In all her time, she's never seen a negotiator, an employer, in this case the government, behave so badly. We saw it in the rail industry, which is... Those strikes have been going, what, seven, eight months now? Mm. And they kept offering 1% more, and then it'd be another 1%, instead of just sitting down, looking for the common ground and thrashing it out and getting, if, getting the deal and ending the dispute if now. If somebody or someone in their family and the worst thing happens and they lose their life, Kevin, in the next six weeks because of what's been going mm. on at the moment, and then suddenly in the budget, the government comes mm. up with extra money for the nurses. Yeah. That, that is that sort of... The, the way that that would resonate with those family members and for the government would be absolutely horrific. It's, and it's extraordinary it's not happened so far, or if, if it has, we're not aware of it, but it was quite interesting. Grant Shapps, who's the... What is his job at the moment? He's business not, secretary, business secretary, or supposed he to He did the media round yesterday and he actually said... If lives are lost, it'll be the striking health workers' fault. So he's upping the ante here. Yeah, yeah but and it... the striking health workers are very much blaming it on the government. The government. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, they, 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 they... Deals are done for emergency cover. He was pretending they weren't. Yeah. Uh, but also, re let's not forget that the head of uh, doctors in A&E said 500 pe people are dying needlessly Each per week, week yeah. because of Grant Shapps' uh, lack of funding and cuts. So but, uh, and when front... Grant Shapps waves his shrouds, it's very, very... The simple. front of your paper yeah, yeah. this morning, the NHS is spending £400,000 a day on private it's ambulances and taxis. £145 million last year. And when you read a headline like that and you realise that money is being spent because they have to get people to hospital, there is money there. They, and that money, what's so infuriating, could be spent probably hiring 3,000 extra nurses yeah. a year. Mm. And retaining them. Easily. And retaining them. Let's just remind you of what is happening this week. Health workers walking out every day except Wednesday. Uh, today, ambulance staff in England and Wales and nurses in England are on the picket line. The first time uh, ever both groups have taken action on the same day. The Royal College of Nursing will continue industrial action tomorrow. On Thursday, physiotherapists walking out and thousands of ambulance staff across five services in England will also be striking on Friday. We will speak to the head of the RCN, Pat Cullen, uh, after seven o'clock, and we will speak to Maria Caulfield, uh, one of the health ministers uh, who is in the government, 8.30 also. She's a nurse. A nurse. Yeah. yeah, and she still does nursing yes. shifts from time to time. You see it declared in a, a rate of interest. There are some on the Labour side too. So she really is at, she's right at the cutting edge. Yeah. But, of course, she's going to have her hands tied and what she can say... <laughs> She'll have been given a script. It'll be yeah. interesting. You, you, well, yes. you know, see what... Because she, you know, she won't believe everything she says.